Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to learn how to use an cited surface. So let's start. The command is in surface. Then you have to go to more. And in more, you will find the title of mesh. And in mesh, you will find the command of an cited surface. As per the definition, it is going to create a surface enclosed by a set of and connected curves. That means this command is basically going to use to close the surfaces. So let's start how to use this command. Just click on this. I'm just going to reset this command. And here we have two options. We are going to understand both options by one example each. So in the trim it, I'm just going to select the outer loop. Basically, the idea behind using this command is that if there are some gaps between the surfaces, so we can fill those gaps. So here you can see we have some trimmed portion here and I need to close this. So for that, I'm just going to use the unsighted surface. So just select the tangent curves here or tangent edges. Here you can see this is how we can use the unsighted surface. Now we are going to have the deep dive into the command. So the very first setting regarding the unsighted surface is that just go to settings and here you will find the option of trim to boundary. So just click on it and it will trim that surface to the boundary. Now click on show results. Now you can see that uh, it is not following the curve which these surfaces are following. That means this is not tangential or having any kind of constraint to the blue faces. So how we can do that? For that just undo the result and go to the constraint faces and here I'm just going to select this one and this one. Now click on show results. Now you can see this is how it is following the same curvature. Earlier it was something like this. So you can see the difference clearly. So this is how we can use the constraint faces. We have one more option for that I'm just going to deselect this one and this one. I'm not going to use any kind of uh, face in the constraint face. Now just go to interior curves and here we have the select curve option. So in that select curve I'm just selecting this curve which is following the natural curvature of the surfaces. Now just click on show results. Now you can see this is how it will come. Now you can see the differences between all three options. The first one was uh, regarding the without constraint faces. The second one is with constraint faces. And third one is with the interior curves, which is this one. So this is regarding the trimmed, like how you can use the trimmed option in the hand-sided surface. So it is something like fill surface, but with some more advanced options. And it is an advancement to the bounded surface. We are going to cover bounded surface as well as uh, fill surface command, but in the later videos. So this is the very first option regarding the unsighted surface. Now let's check the second example, which is regarding the triangular. So I'm just going to hide this and going to hide this and just show this. Now just go to unsighted surface and here I'm just going to select the option of triangular. So I'm just going to have these curves basically inside surface is going to be get used where you want to enclose some surface okay so this is how it is going to work with the triangular basically the idea behind triangular is that that it is going to create a sharp point at the center let me just uh, give you some glimpse like here you have the shape control in the shape control there is a option of center control now i can deviate the x y or z this is z it is the same vector following these like in the manipulator you can see what is z what is y and what is x and here we have the center flat like this at how much flatness you want at the center if you want maximum so be it as a maximum and you can align the centers it is all up to you that at what location you need the center suppose i need at 50 50 so i'll put it as 50 50. now this is uh, regarding the constraint face so i'm just going to select all the faces and going to offer the constraint let's see what will happen now you can see this is how it will 
look like and I'm just going to decrease the value of Z like this and here you can see the continuity is G1 so I'm just going to give it as G0 so it will be like a position if you need tangency so here it will follow the tangency between the faces and this is curvature if you need it more lenient then have a curve so here I am just going to select the perpendicular basically this is regarding the isoparametric curves so I'll let you know about that also so I'm just going to click on OK and uh, just tick this option if you want to merge faces so this is how it will look like now just go to menu then go to insert and here you will find the option of derived curves then go to isoparametric curves now here I'm just going to plot the UV curves on a few faces like this one and this one so you can see how beautifully they are tracing the curves so this is regarding the perpendicular like uh, they are going to be perpendicular regarding each other for the curves so this is how you can generate the smooth surfaces using n-sided surface and we have covered all the options in the n-sided surface let's have a quick glimpse of the n-sided surface first we have understood regarding the trimmed and in trimmed we have understood about the outer loop then the constraint faces what are constraint faces and then we have the shape control then the trim to boundary and along with that we have also covered the interior curves which is more than enough for using the n-sided surface later we have discussed about the triangular like uh, what is the difference between the trimmed and triangular in the surfaces which you need to close without any center for that you are just going to use the trimmed otherwise you will use the triangular as in this case for closing the surface so this is all up to you to understand that what kind of surface you need and later on we have also discussed about what is flow direction basically the flow direction is all about the isoparametric curves that how the isoparametric curves are going to flow on the newly generated surface and along with that how those curves are going to be get dependent on the reference surfaces from which the new surfaces has been generated so this is regarding the flow direction so that is all regarding the n-sided surface i hope you have enjoyed this video and if you have learned something new from this video please do hit a like and share this video and don't forget to subscribe our channel thank you so much